Are you working with osteoarthritis in one or both hips and struggling to navigate your practice or certain poses within your practice? I've been speaking this week about hip OA in yoga. In my previous video, I unpacked the causes and why there is a higher incidence of hip OA in yoga practitioners. I explained the basic anatomy and important concepts like skeletal variation. I strongly encourage you to check this video out to get a fuller picture of hip OA in yoga. I've linked it for you in the description below. Hi, I'm Kathy from Tribalance Yoga and I help women who practice yoga who are struggling with hip pain on the mat to navigate their practice without having to stop practicing altogether and ultimately to transform their movement potential. So after taking in the previous video lesson, you may have been left still wondering, is yoga good or bad for hip OA? Should we all just trade in our yoga pants for flippers and floaties now? The answer is potentially both. Like with any movement practice, it can be both good and bad for your hips, depending on how you practice and your intention. There is a high incidence of hip OA in yoga today, partly because traditional practices often involved taking the joint into very extreme ranges of motion. When the practitioner has the range of motion, and this is done with adequate muscular support, this is usually not so much a problem. But traditional practices like Ashtanga didn't tend to focus a lot on muscular engagement. Apart from the bandhas, they focused mostly on alignment and too heavy a focus on alignment without catering to skeletal variation created a generation of yogis with excess wear and tear in their hips. And this is a great part of living in this time in yoga. As our understanding of the body and the nuances of human movement has evolved, so has our teaching. Yoga teachers now have a range of influences from traditional teachings to the very latest research in movement and exercise sciences. We get to marry these two incredible fields of knowledge to really bring some truth and merit to the saying, yoga is for everybody. Practices and teachings are now much more inclusive of different bodies. We know that skeletal variation exists. And thanks to the crusading of teachers like Joe Fee and Paul Grilly, who really pioneered, pioneered this message in the yoga world, most or at least many new teachers are learning this. So older doesn't always mean better, right? Just because something was written in Light on Yoga or the Hatha Yoga Pratapika, it is notably very old and sacred but it doesn't mean it necessarily is the best information available today. As yogis, we are committed to our own growth and evolution. And this includes the involvement of our understanding about what is current best practice for teaching and practicing movement. So how much range of motion is enough and is more better? The answer to how much range of motion is enough depends on your intention. If your intention is to increase mobility, taking the joint into soft tissue resistance will increase the mobility in the tissue over time. If the first onset of resistance is a compression sensation, a firm or sharp or bone on bone sensation, then increasing mobility, range of motion, may not be possible. 
And the goal is then to maintain the current level of mobility. If your intention is to improve the health of the joint, the hydration and lubrication within the joint, then taking the joint to its end range of compression and holding there for a few minutes, like in a yin practice, will serve this purpose. If your intention is toning and strengthening the connective tissues, then taking the joint to its end range, the tensile load from the stretch, will start to stimulate more collagen to be laid down to thicken the connective tissue in response to that greater load environment. If your intention is to use your body sensations to anchor your busy mind and slow down your brain waves in order to have a meditative experience on the mat, then taking the joint to the first onset of resistance and then marinating there a while before going deeper may be enough. And while the first three intentions grounded in the physical body are valid and beneficial, what makes yoga so powerful and transformative, in my opinion, is the latter intention. So we could say that we only need to take each pose into enough range that elicits a sensation that helps us to pay attention to our bodies in the present moment. That's how much range of motion is enough. So how much range of motion is too much? This may be the better question to ask when thinking about how to protect the hip with OA. Taking the joint into its end range of compression where the sensation is firm and sharp uh, is fine and healthy for the joint. It's when we confuse the bony joint compression sensation with a muscular stretch sensation and try to force the joint and move deeper into range that we can aggravate the symptoms of OA. The first challenge is having the discernment to know the difference between these two types of sensation. And this comes with time and practice and some degree of trial and error. Like with anything that we want to get better at, we usually need to push past our threshold slightly in order to know where that threshold or boundary is. So as you're cultivating this skill, you will inevitably go too far occasionally. But it's my hope that with greater knowledge and understanding of these principles, the learning curve is quick and you learn to discern the difference in your own body relatively quickly without too much aggravation of symptoms. The second challenge is being able to support your OA hip enough to achieve that ideal compression level, that resistance, without overdoing. And this is where modifications and props become super valuable in learning to navigate your practice. Props help to support and create more space in the joint. If you're working with hip OA and you want to keep practicing and keep your practice alive and thriving, check out my free Happy Hips Pose Modification Guidebook to get a complete list of poses and modifications you can use as a mat side companion. Thank you for coming on this journey of learning and discovery with me. I'm here to support your highest movement potential. Namaste.